Hi, my name is Zai, and this is me playing Quake Live with the Cooler Master Sentinel 3. This is probably their best quality mouse, but it's not the best. So far, I think the Alcor is their best. The Sentinel 3 seems well built, has a top sensor, great buttons, and a decent shape. But it also has a weight imbalance toward the back, and that's without the added weights or panel. So with that, it weighs about 110 grams, which is acceptable. I've used to a mouse that weighed 120 grams, and I was playing pretty well with it, even though most prefer under 100. With the panel, it's about 115 grams, and with the weights, it's about 135. While I recommend that they keep mice under 100 grams and then allow for extra weights, that's really not the issue. The issue is how the weight is distributed. I actually found it hard to rocket jump and aim properly. And if you add the weights, the problem becomes worse. Now, before we go on, this is probably only an issue for first-person shooter players. If you're playing MOBA, RTS, or MMO, the weight may cause some discomfort, but it should be usable and you can probably get used to it. I just wanted to point it out because they could have made it to suit everyone, especially considering they used a top sensor with a 3988 optical. And one more potential problem, with the LED on white, I noticed it was getting quite hot. I guess that could be a good thing in cold climates. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the details. Despite the thumb rust, it's actually a fairly safe shape, with plenty of room for the thumb and fingers on the sides. The sides also have enough curvature and angle to make it easy to pick up, without it being uncomfortable. The button slope seems gradual, without being too high, and the hump is 3.5cm high, and it's a little toward the back. The grip width is around 5.5cm, and the length on the feet is about 11.3cm, so it's roughly a 2 to 1 ratio, meaning it's twice as long as it is wide. I find this ratio generally feels most comfortable, with exceptions. It's meant to be a palm grip mouse, but with a roughly 18cm hand, I feel comfortable using all three grip styles. I put this in the medium to large category, so for palm and claw grip, I'd say this could work for hands between 16 and 20 centimeters. For anything larger, it might feel too thin at the front. Fingertip grip, maybe 17 to 20. There are no comfort grooves in the buttons, but they are separate from the shell. Here's a listen to all the clicks. The left and right buttons are Omron switches, which are great for MOBA and FPS, light and responsive. Mouse 3 is a bit harder to press in, but it's fairly standard. There is some tactile feedback on the wheel, but not too much, and it's smooth enough for scrolling. The side buttons have very little travel, feel responsive, but maybe a little hard to press in, because of how they feel and also their shape and position. The DPI buttons are small and out of the way, they're easy to press in, and good for what they are. I could achieve my usual 70 clicks or so in 10 seconds. I can't shoot a click so I'm not sure if it's good for that, and I couldn't find any obvious click delay. So the buttons on this mouse are quite good, or they could do with some improving too. The main reason that I wanted to try this mouse is the sensor, because I want more mice using the 3988. I put it in the top sensor category, along with the 3310 and 3360. Right now I'm just going to check the implementation. This is some rocket jumping, and the weight at the back does make this a bit harder, but I can adjust enough, but the sensor obviously handles it well. Now the sniper test, zooming right into FAV1, this is at sensitivity 0.9 at 1600 dpi raw input. Moving pixel by pixel at first, then speeding up. This is just checking the tracking. And as usual, the 3988 performs very well. I hope Cooler Master use this sensor more often. Just quickly at 400 dpi, again, good result. And in a rocket jump test, it feels responsive, and I can't make it spin out. This means that the sensor is good for low sensitivity and high sensitivity players. And I couldn't find any acceleration or deceleration and the liftoff distance is between 1 and 2 DVDs. In the line test, we see no jitter, angle snapping, or skipping. The liftoff movement is well controlled, and there is no sensor rattle. Solid performance as always from the 3988. Another important factor is build quality. I used too many mice to comment on durability, but I can give you an indication of how well it's made. When tapping and shaking it, there is no rattle, just a cable making a creaking sound. It's mostly plastic except for the scroll wheel, which is rubberized. Matte finish except for the clear plastic on top, and it feels a tiny bit slippery, but the shape allows me to grip it just fine. My hands are really dry though, might be better with some sweat. So this should be a durable mouse in terms of how it wears. The cable is a smooth braid, probably one of the better braided cables that I've used. But these days, I just use a mouse bungee so cables don't bother me. And on the base, there are four mouse feet, two of which are quite long, and they glide very nicely over the Cooler Master Swift RX mouse pad. Software-wise, you can assign each button to something new, but not mouse wheel up and down. 
A good range of options including mouse, keyboard, macro, multimedia, rapid fire, profile and DPI. And in the Storm TX mode, you can assign a button to create other functions on the mouse. This is where you can change the mouse wheel to do something else, like increase or decrease the volume. That essentially doubles the amount of functions that you can have on this mouse, so this could be a good MMO option, although I couldn't get it working for forward and back browsing on button 4. In the LED options, the spectrum mode didn't seem to work, breathing does, as does static, and I'm not sure what the rapid fire is meant to do, to the OLED display, which tells you which profile you're using and which DPI you're at, which is a cool feature, but something you could easily remember anyway. You can add your own logo, but that's too gimmicky for me to even want to try. I firmly believe that they should remove that idea to decrease the weight and help the balance. For sensor, it's a 3988, so it can do 50 to 6400, in increments of 50. And I tried adjusting the liftoff distance, but it didn't seem to work. Surface calibration was great without needing to change it. And you can change the polling rate and other sensitivity settings in the final tab. Five profiles, which save to the onboard memory. So they're the main details that you need to know. Now for a personal opinion. Solid build, great sensor, feels like a premium mouse. But the shape is a bit awkward and the weight is imbalanced. I could aim pretty well with it, but nothing special and nothing too bad either. Just the imbalance causing me to go off center on the flicks. I don't think I'll be recommending this mouse for FPS players, but for MOBA, RTS and MMO, the clicks and features might make it a good option. And I think that they need to update the software so everything is working. Hope that helps, if you want to support the channel, you can buy this mouse using the Amazon links for overseas, or Mwave links for Australia. Special thanks to Coolmaster for sending this out for a review, subscribe for more reviews and gaming videos, check Twitter and Facebook for small updates, and if you want mouse recommendations, please visit my website and use the search. So thanks for watching, like this video, and I'll catch you in the next.